boys and girls, Richard the Dick Coffin here, flying solo on the DMAX channel. I was going to do a stream, but apparently Matt and Kalence have decided to go fuck each other. And uh, I just, I normally don't do this, we normally don't do sort of reviews of shows like Raw and stuff. Well, I mean, they do, they watch TNA just because, well, they've already seen Serbian film. But last night's Raw was so fucking bad, it, it wasn't even that it was so bad I got angry, it was actually... I was indifferent to the whole thing. At one point, I forgot that it was on. I was watching it going, how long have this been on for? How long has this been going on for? Yes, I'm wearing a hat. Get over it. Um, you know, it was like, I thought, I'm going to download this episode of Raw and have it as a screensaver. Um, pretty much all I did was you know, trying to make it somewhat interesting on Twitter. This was my commentary for the whole show. I did start off by telling a pretty risky joke, you know, which was about Owen Hart. And, you know, Owen Hart you know, he wasn't on drugs when he died. However, he was, you know, on a massive come down from a very big high. You know, that got, you know, I thought, you know, if you're going to start something, start full on. Then you go. But this was all I could sit there and, and come up with, which was basically starting from. So Triple H comes out and goes, I don't lose. I never lose. So now he's stealing. He's stealing Alicia Fox's thing. That was a nothing promo. Batista quit, you know, which is good because he now when he quit, he finally got the pop that he's been dying for for the last six months. Um, and I've always heard the Batista, he's going fucking quite badly bald, and I'm surprised bald Batista has not been trending worldwide. Uh, you know, Triple H has said, he, there's a reason I'm the boss. And I'm like, yes, because you fucked Vince's daughter. You know, isn't that sad that Triple H gets to be the boss for fucking Vince's daughter, and yet Randy Savage can't get in the Hall of Fame for doing the same thing, you know? Um... You know, he's, he, Triple H is just butt hurt. He got Randy Savage's sloppy seconds. That's all it is. Um, Triple H, well, you know, Batista wasn't wearing his blue outfit anymore. However, you know, T, you know Triple H had a very big bruised eye, so clearly he's uh, he's copying him there. Uh, Batista said, "I quit," and um, uh, yeah, Batista quit. And so I had an idea for maybe, uh, you know, what if we had CM Punk versus Stone Cold versus Batista in a ball on a pole match. The winner is the guy who gets the ball and then takes it home. Right. And there was a, you know, an un unintentional bit of uh, humour from Michael Cole when he said Batista just blew up. You know, and then I started thought, thinking like, maybe he could go into blue movies. He could be called, you know, Blue Tista, you know, the, the blue movie. T I don't know. I'm trying to thump you know, black and blue. Blue, his load. You know, it could team him with Biggie Langsing in a team called Black and Blue. You know, Batista quitting. I mean, that really did come out of the blue. And um, and uh, Batista, and of course, now that means Brie Bella and Batista have now gone in this in two days on the trot, and literally dozens of fans uh, are possibly slightly bothered by this. Of course, Dixie Carter, I imagine, is breaking kayfabe and is on the phone to their agents. Um, and then I was trying to think. Then I was so bored. I was trying to think of you know alternatives for Wade Barrett. Like he comes out. Instead of saying, I'm afraid I've got some bad news, he comes out and says, with a load of rabbis that are crying, saying, I'm afraid I've got some sad Jews. Or he comes out and he's in a pair of flip-flops, going, I'm afraid I've got some bad shoes. Or he comes out with a load of ugly, nude, naked people and says, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. And I just know it's, there's more. You post your own. Um, come up with your own fucking ideas. Um, the, in, someone did post a point, uh, response saying, you know, oh, you know, Batista... Uh, you know, Stone Cold and Sam Punk would be the wife beat of, and I did mention that Batista, you know, if he if he beats his wife, at least you know he, her eyes will match his wrestling gear. Yeah, Batista. You know, then Michael Cole says quite simply, Batista just quit Evolution, so he's officially a creationist. This is this is seriously how bored I was. Right? It was like, have you ever watched a TV show, and it's uh, you forget when it started. It's like I was watching fucking you know Neil Kinnock was the leader of the Labour Party when this fucking thing started. Uh, this, the crowd was obviously completely and utterly incompetent because they were cheering for Seamus, and you can't spell Seamus without shame and us. Um, I did mention one thing, and I found this out when I went to Raw in London. I found it funny that they searched all of the fans for drugs on the way in, and yet RVD is on the card. Um, uh, RVD, someone mentioned about RVD having a streak at WrestleMania, which is four, so I figured if he loses 20 matches in a row, then he'll have 420. Um, so Damien Sandow comes out for a nothing segment. You know, he didn't even. He's now jobbing without even getting pinned. I also had an alternative. Now we could you know, for the Shield, which is you know TNA could rip this off, 
and it's basically Charlie Uniform November Tango Sierra. Um, then there's some terrible Bo Dallas puns. Uh, I'm on Bo Dallas diet plan, I'm Botoxing. Um, also interesting, I found it interesting that the WWE.com website is referring to Kofi Kingston as the Dreadlock Dynamo, which is interesting because he actually doesn't have dreadlocks. And he also isn't a fat bloke wearing a, a light bulb dressed as a Christmas tree singing opera. Um, Bo Dallas at the Bo2 Arena, um, his favourite band is Bo EM. And um, have, you ever, you know, have you ever been sat stuck in a lecture that's like about the history of Russian, the n Russian garden gnome industry d during the Soviet fucking era? And, and you're like, why am I? This, this is what Raw was like. Um, Stephanie was obviously, you know, had to get out. She'd obviously been on the toilet all the time. She didn't want to piss herself again, like she did. That, and she didn't piss herself, by the way. Um, it was just it was the back of her dress. Uh, piss, I don't know. Um, she, she was wearing black and white, so obviously it wouldn't show up any of the stains. Uh, so they announced that there's going to be a possible stretch her match. I don't know who they're, who they're stretching, or this poor woman is. Um, then John Cena comes out, oh joy, and the crowd was actually cheering him more uh, than they normally do. And uh, John, you know, of course, John Cena's never give up. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he will never give up trying to piggyback on Daniel Bryan's popularity. And and then Dan, and then during his promo, this says what it is. This says what the sums up the show. His, his this was the highlight of the evening was Cena's promo. Now I don't think John Cena's bad on the microphone, but it's like you know the stopped clock gets it right twice a day. Well, John Cena's promos work on the same principle, except the clock is a sundial in Iceland. And this wasn't even a great promo. At one point he goes, Daniel Bryan is good. He's very good. And I'm just thinking, John, easy, will you? You don't want to overdo it, man. He did have a brilliant line about Stephanie's surgery, putting it in the chest. I'll give him that. And uh, Stephanie had a good line come back to it. You know, Dixie, that's how you that's how you should be Dixie. You know, don't be a Dixie, be a Stephanie. Um, uh, I, then I started getting bored when Kane came out. And I had an idea. It's like they keep calling him the Demon Cane, and it was cool. And I think, what if he comes out just covered in like gooey liquid, and he'd be called the Semen Cane, you know? And uh, this is going to be based primarily on the antics of Pat Patterson backstage. Um, Randy Orton then said, uh, Randy Orton promo, um, losing the will to live at this point. He said, I am the face of the WWE. This is presumably because there's no other part of him that's marketable. Um, uh, that JBL said some very sort of worrying Nazi-style eugenics comments uh, about uh, El Torito being almost a human being. Yeah. Um, uh, then Ziggler fought Del Rio in a match that you know, to determine who is going to go to Money in the Bank and not win. Uh, Del Rio won that, obviously. Uh, brilliant. Uh, then they had a Special Olympics advert. I'm assuming this is, you know, either they're trying to rip off TNA or they just need a place to send Ryback. Uh, if, I did then ask a question, a very fair question, that if John Cena gets a terminal illness, does he get to meet himself? And if he has kids, is he only ever going to meet them or see them if they're dying? I'm just saying. Um, then Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler needs to just give... He is the Ric Flair of commentary. Um, his jokes are to comedy what you know, polio is to having good legs, quite frankly. Um, then the Usos did a promo that, quite frankly, is going to earn them a drug testing uh, uh, and possibly a wellness violation. Um, some ideas uh, I had. Luke Harper, uh, his super kick needs to be called Sweet Beard Music. I'm just putting this idea. And I think Eric Rowan needs a complete makeover, and he should be called Upside Down Seamus. The... Um, and then someone said, talking about this was that was the, one of the best performances of Sheen's career, which sometimes is quite frankly, it's like saying that's the best turd baguette I've ever had. Um, what next? There literally was nothing. Uh, then I said, uh, the commentary, can we just, I'd rather just not bother, you know. You know, a deaf, dumb, and blind kid could play a mean pinball, and he apparently could do a better job at commentary than these fuckers, you know. It's just, and at this point, this was the, into the second hour, and I just gave up. And at that point, I sort of realised, um, oh, by the way, Eric Rowan got his first ever pinfall victory. And um, in, in, in the year since they debuted. That's the same amount of 
pinball victories that uh, that was it Heath Slater's had, and um, the, the second to last fucking pinball victory that Heath Slater had was against Doink the Clown, who's dead. Uh, yeah. Um, that was pretty much it. This was all. That's all. The, all there is. And this is what I've got to say. You've got three hours of Raw. This is the thing. The pay per views at Raw, for, for for the pay per views for WWE this year have been great. They have been some brilliant matches. WrestleMania was fantastic. Elimination Dangle was good. You know, Raw Rumble was obviously interesting to watch and was but was responsible for the things that followed. Um, Extreme Rules had good matches and the Payback had good matches. And yet. It's it's the fucking shows in between. They have good roars, they have bad roars, but it's generally depending on how excitable the crowd are. And there's no sense of it's like they're almost filling gaps in. And it's like you've got three fucking hours. You've got three hours once a week. And the difference between the pay per views and the reason they're good and the reason the roars are shit is because there's nothing but wrestling on the pay per views. They don't have promos backstage, or you know, at least not really. They don't have promos in the ring. They don't go overboard with any sort of comedy segments in between, they give you a wrestling match. Is it, is it too much to ask that Damien Sandell gets a match? I don't care if he loses all the time. Give him a fucking match. You know, can we not give the Divas more than four minutes before they fucking crap out? Can we have some matches that make sense rather than just have, you know, that's all I'm saying is just can we have something that, and then of course I give up on Raw and come back to find out that Seth Rollins has quit the Shield. Um, yeah, which is basically the right move. I reckon Ambrose is going to follow him, and then you have basically the authority now has a Triple H goes back in his suit, does the McMahon thing with Stephanie, and then you've got basically Orton, and maybe they'll build on that, and then Reigns will be the phase, and they'll probably end up. I can imagine some Survivor Series match with those lot all there, and uh, no, that's it. But the good thing about this is if they do turn Ambrose, and they've already turned Rollins, there's now a spot, there's now a face, a spot for a baby face to come up. You know, and hopefully it won't be Seamus. Um, it, it, please don't be fucking Seamus or anyone. But but there's a spot now there. And if they turn Ambrose, then you've got like a sort of old school corporation sized faction. And then you can bring up some other guys who are going to be faces. You know, Cesaro would be one pick, maybe bad, maybe bad news Barrett, who would maybe bring up some. I don't have a clue. But just not RVD, not Seamus. And definitely not fucking El Torito. Oh, that's it for me. That was my review of Raw. Uh, try harder, please.